Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Resident Community Church. Happy to have you here to worship with us this morning. Let's go inside and open with a couple of songs together. When I met my hand, it just getting started. When I hit a wall, that you just walked through. questions you are the answer it all points to you so you're the god is your the god of the breakthrough when i'm breaking down you'll be working a way through when there's no way out there's this one thing i know you're still on your throne so whatever i'm feeling I still got a reason to praise, praise, praise. Out of our wrongs, you write our story. Out of the cross come rivers of grace. Out of the grave burst. no way out cause this one thing I know that you're still on your throne so whatever I'm feeling I still got a reason to pray the 
have a seat. Good morning and welcome to Resonate Community Church. It's great to be here to worship with you today, the God who is our Father and we are his children and we have the privilege to worship him. I'm Lisa and I serve here in the Go ministry and in our student ministry and I'm just grateful that you are here with us and that we get to be here together. If you're online, a special welcome to you today. Uh, We're grateful that you're here as well. If you're in the audience here in person, we've got this card in front of you, especially if you're new here, we'd love for you to fill it out and drop that by the connection or the welcome center after the service. And if you have a prayer request, you can put that on the card and we have a prayer team that would love to pray for you. If you're online, there's options for you to click on that online too so that we can be praying for you as well. We are here together to worship the God who loves us. And there are a few things that I wanna tell you about as we continue to grow as followers of Jesus together. First of all, if you have a student in grades six through 12, I'd love for you to um, bring them this Wednesday evening to our Pastor Steve's house for some fun, some treats, some games, and just some time to be together this summer. And if you even know somebody who's in grades six through 12 who's looking for something fun to do and some people to connect with, it'll be a great place for kids to connect and grow together and to continue understanding what it means to follow Jesus as a student. And then also happening on um, August 13th, it's a Saturday, we support a ministry called Sleep in Heavenly Peace here at Resonate Community Church. And that is a ministry that helps build beds for kids in our community who have no beds to sleep on. And their, their motto is no kid sleeps on the floor in our town. And we get to be a part of that. And in doing that, we as followers of Jesus get to meet these people, meet a felt need, which is so important for them to have beds to sleep in and start to build relationships with them. So that's happening on the 13th of August. It's actually in Burnsville. Um, You can sign up online at resonatebuzz.com for that. Just one quick story that just happened over the last couple weeks that that illustrates the importance of these ministries. Um, We were asked to deliver beds to a family in Shakopee in a a new apartment. It was their first apartment ever. They've They've been homeless for many, many, many years. Five kids, no beds. Nothing in their apartment except garbage bags of clothes. And we brought five beds, five, yeah, five beds. And the kids were so ecstatic. And we realized they have nothing else. So we decided, let's do a little bit more than just bring these five beds. Let's get this apartment set up. So this church community and some of our community members at large came together. We did Amazon lists. We did Sign Up Genius lists. And we outfitted their apartment with a couch that they could have for a sleeper sofa for the parents to sleep on, an extra chair, all the kitchen items, everything they could need. And it just was a wonderful representation of these wonderful people who have literally kind of fallen between the cracks and yet deserve love and they deserve God's love and we want to be the ones to show them. So if you didn't have information on that, we've got a Resonate Friends Facebook group. I'd love for you to join it. But these are the ways that we reach out to people and these are the ways that we as a church in our community can say to them, we love you because God loves you. So Sleep in Heavenly Peace, it's just one of the many ways that we get into our community and we share this love with others. I hope you'll join in on that building some beds. We deliver them all the time. You can be a part of that too. So many things. All right, that was a really long announcement. The next one will be quick, but equally important, marriage. If you're married or if you're seriously enga- if you're seriously dating or engaged, we want to support that too. The church is the answer to marriage. Jesus is the answer to marriage. I've been married for 25 years. I'm going to show up at this thing. It's going to be good. We're doing a marriage enri- enrichment seminar, I'd call it. Um, it's three Saturdays starting in the month of, we're going to do one in September, one in October 1 in November. And there's going to be some uh, surveys we can take. Our our very own Jolena Falkenstein, who's married to this guy up here. She's a marriage and family therapist. Very smart, very godly, very wonderful. I'm really long-winded today. But these are really good things. I hope you'll join us. If you know somebody who's in the best place of their marriage or in the worst place of their marriage or anywhere in between, I hope that you will invite them to join us. So all of these things are on ResonateBuzz.com. Let's continue to worship the God who gives us all great things. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, Lisa. Um, This next song, and I'll have you remain seated for now, but this next song is new to us. It's called um, Same God. And what this uh, song talks about uh, or celebrates is that um, there might be people among us right now in the room or watching online that are going through something tough right now and really um, wanting to call on God to help them through that, to kind of defeat or get through that struggle. Um, Even if that isn't the case for you right now, there's a good chance that either you will have that happen in the future or that you have had that happen in the past, right? 
And so um, this song really focuses in on Romans chapter 8, verse 37, that says that we are more than conquerors through Christ who saved us. And um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll sing the beginning of the song, uh, sing along as you feel comfortable, and eventually we'll have you stand uh, about halfway through and sing the rest with us at that point. So again, this song is called Same God. I'm calling on the God of Jacob Whose love endures through generations I know that you will keep your covenant I'm calling on the God of Moses The one who opened up the ocean I need you now to do the same thing for me. Amen. Let's sing, Oh God, Oh God. Let's go and stand and sing this song together. Let's stand and sing. Sing, I'm calling. I'm calling on the God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the lowly. I know with you all things are possible. I'm calling on the Shepherd boy courageous I may not face Goliath But I've got my own giants Oh God, my God, I need you Oh God, my God, I need you now How I need you now Oh rock, oh rock of ages I'm standing Sing with me, sing, you heard. You heard your children then, you hear your children now. You are the same God, you are the same God. You answered prayers back then, and you will answer now. You are the same God, you are the same God. You were providing them, you are providing now. You are the same God, you are the same. Let's sing that together, you moved. You, you moved in power then. God moved.
Let's sing this together. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a savior. Please pray with me. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for um, this morning and for the opportunity to worship your great name. 
And we are so thankful and in awe um, that you are the same God, the God of Jacob and the God of Moses, the God of Mary. Um, so much so that it, you know, it brings me to tears because you are transcendent throughout the generations and you are here with us today. Um, and we thank you for that. And we thank you for your word and your nearness to us. I just pray for everyone here this morning, for those who are watching online, um, and just pray that um, you would be with every individual here. Lord, we, we love you and we lift up your name. We pray this in your name, amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. Um, I want to start this morning by talking about something that happened in the summer of 1999. Um, some of you were not born yet that summer. Some of you were already older than I am now. Um, we all remember that in different ways. But in the summer of 1999, one of the most popular sci-fi films of all time was released and became a huge hit in theaters. And that was a movie called Sixth Sense. And that's right, that was 23 years ago. Those of you my age or older just shuddered when you heard that number, but it's true. It was released on August 6th of 1999. And that movie starred Bruce Willis at the peak of his acting powers alongside a child actor named Haley Joel Osment, who is still a very successful actor, but looks way different now as an adult, um, if you ever go and take a look. But Sixth Sense was written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan, who wrote a, a crazy twist into it that made the movie into an instant classic. And if you haven't seen it, here is your spoiler alert. You've had 23 years, so I really hope I don't offend anybody here. Um, so, but you've been warned, if you haven't, to put your hands over your ears uh, for a second, okay? But here, here's the twist. Bruce Willis's character is dead the entire movie. I know, isn't that crazy? Now, the week after Sixth Sense was released, two friends of mine named Craig and Kyle went to go see the movie at a local theater. Now, Kyle, he's the kind of friend that, that has a tendency to talk at times maybe that he shouldn't be talking and say things that maybe he shouldn't be saying. Now, you can probably think of a friend or two in your life or maybe a relative or two in your life that fit that description too, right? Uh, they had their, their popcorn and their soft drinks, and as the trailers ended and the movie was about to begin, Kyle leaned over to Craig and asked, hey man, have you heard about this movie? And when Craig shook his head, no, Kyle replied, yeah man, apparently Bruce Willis's character is dead the entire time. <laughs> Thus ruining Craig's entire movie experience. That is such an inconsiderate story that even though it didn't even happen to me, I still remember it vividly after 23 years. But Kyle was just so excited about that cool twist, he couldn't help but share it with Craig, right? Now, this is our third week of our sermon series called Filled, where we're studying how we can be filled with the blessings and traits of God and our lives thus fulfilled with the plans that God has for us rather than our different plans that can sometimes lead us not to being filled, but actually being quite empty. Now, in the first two weeks, we've heard Pastor Curtis teach about being filled with the fullness of God, uh, and then last week, being filled with the Holy Spirit and the good guardrails and wisdom that we see introduced into our lives as a result. Now, this morning, we'll be studying from the book of Philippians, which is Paul's letter to the early church in Philippi. And we'll start this morning at chapter 1, verse 9, and here is what Paul prays for them in that church in Philippi. This is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Now, bearing fruit 
is the analogy here, the, the fill, being filled with the fruit of righteousness. And bearing fruit is, is a really common metaphor that we see used a lot of different places in the Bible, right? You see Jesus and others use it in their teaching a lot because it was relatable to their audiences. Uh, the people that Jesus spoke to and the people Paul is writing to here, they, they either grow their own food or they, at the very least, have someone in their family that does, and so when they reach harvest season and their, their plants or trees would, would bear fruit, it meant that they had uh, they'd properly planted, they had watered, they had cared for, fed those plants or trees. And the end result is that they do then what they were designed to do. They bear the fruit, you know, that they were, the whole point of all that work went into them bearing fruit. And his audience here would be, again, very familiar with the work that it takes to make crops bear fruit. And now Paul names the qualities that he says lead to bearing fruit of righteousness. He writes love, knowledge, insight, and discerning. Now, whether you're a Jesus follower or not this morning, those are probably qualities that you would like people to say that you have, right? Right? I mean, it'd be great for people to say that we're loving, that we're knowledgeable, that we're insightful, and that we're discerning. Those are the descriptions of a good and trustworthy person. And so it makes sense that you'd need to demonstrate those qualities in order to also be a righteous person, right? Now, if we're going to show the fruit of an accomplishment by, uh, like being a righteous person, it has to start with planting a seed and watering it, right? If we want to be a righteous person, but we aren't loving, we aren't knowledgeable, we aren't inf- insightful, and we aren't discerning, it'd be a little bit like wanting to be a professional bodybuilder, but never lifting weights. Or wanting to be a quarterback, but never practicing how to throw a football. Or wanting to be a professional chef, but never learning to cook beyond warming up lean cuisines in a microwave, which is pretty much where I stand right now. Now, the people in Philippi receiving Paul's letter knew you couldn't expect to, a, a tree to grow without watering and caring for it. If we want to achieve a goal, we have to put in the work to get to that goal, and being a righteous person is no exception to that. But if you look around, there, there seem to be a lot more people who you know, compliment or say that they desire the qualities that go into being a righteous person than there are actually pursuing a goal of being a righteous person themselves, right? Or even more so, perhaps they've invented their, kind of their own version of what righteousness means. And that can get tricky and noisy at times or maybe even a little bit confusing, because it can feel as though maybe we're living at times in a way that no one else is living. But thankfully for us as Jesus followers, when it comes to that work of bearing fruit of righteousness, Jesus tells us in this book of John, chapter 15, uh, that starts starting at verse four. He says, remain in me and I as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So we bear fruit amid the world's noise only and solely because we are attached to Jesus as branches from his vine. And this tells us something important, and that is, apart from him, we bear no fruit, which also means that believing ourselves to be righteous people separate from Jesus means that we have not achieved righteousness at all, but rather self-righteousness. And self-righteousness happens when we become convinced of our moral superiority over others just because we happen to be uniquely awesome, right? Which, as a Christian, wouldn't make much sense given what we just saw Jesus say in that book of John. But let's be honest. It's, it's a little easy to slip into that mode at times, isn't it? Uh, to believe maybe that we have uh, living righteously handled through our own control, 
our own devices or, or to compare ourselves to others to make us feel like we're at least better compared to that other person over there. Self-righteousness uh, to me is a little bit like driving on a highway. Uh, have you ever noticed that anytime someone is driving slower than you, you kind of chide them in your head for not driving as quickly as they should? Like, come on, slow poke. Why are you driving 60 and a 70 here, right? But have you also noticed that anytime someone zooms by you driving faster than you, you'll also kind of chide them in your head for driving quicker than they should. And we probably realize that the people driving by us, as well as the people we're driving by, they're probably all having the same inner monologues about us, right? But, but in reality, of course, the only thing that matters is whether we are driving the speed that we're supposed to be driving. Not whether others are driving the speed that they're supposed to be or our opinions about them or their opinions about us. If we're filled with self-righteousness, how could we possibly be filled with the real fruit of righteousness? But, but that's what self-righteousness does, right? It lures us into comparing ourselves to others. And let's be honest, they're not usually the type of others that make us strive to live more righteously, are they? Uh, we'll usually strategically pick the other people that we're gonna compare ourselves to to make us feel like we're doing okay already without making any effort to improve ourselves, Right? And that's a trap we have to avoid as Jesus followers because self-righteous people instinctively resist grace because they convince themselves they don't need it. Whereas righteous people embrace grace because they know that we all fall short and we all need it. The righteous know that we aren't Jesus followers because we're perfect but rather we follow Jesus because he is perfect. The righteous know that we glorify Jesus for his perfection rather than glorifying ourselves for whatever perception we may have tricked ourselves into about our own perfection. Now it's interesting to me to note that uh, Paul wrote this letter to Philippi about 30 years after the resurrection of Jesus in the early 60s AD. Now, he was in a, a Roman prison at the time where he was put as punishment for spreading the gospel of Jesus and later executed for it. Now, to contrast that, about 300 years later, 300 years after Paul wrote this letter to Philippi, specifically on February 27th of the year 380, Roman Emperor Theodosius I, and I hope I pronounced that right, but Theodosius I decreed that Christianity would become the official religion of Rome, which means that in the span of about 300 years, which is not that long in the broad scope of things, proclaiming faith in Jesus went from a capital offense in Rome, it would get you imprisoned and killed, to becoming the only available religion in Rome. If you walk around the city today, you see signs of Christianity everywhere, from crosses to the Vatican itself. Now, how on earth did that happen in just 300 years? Now, the first answer is simplest, and that's because the life and resurrection of Jesus is real. But the second answer is almost as important. And in order to talk about that this morning, I need to talk about a place called Wall Drug. Now, if you've, if you've ever driven through South Dakota, you've seen a million of these signs advertising a tourist trap uh, store called Wall Drug. Signs advertise everything from free ice water, how, how nice of them, uh, to the best donuts in the state. And as a result, they attract up to 20,000 visitors daily during the summer months to the town of Wall, which itself only has a population of about 750 people. A Wall Drug was built in 1931, way back in the midst of the Great Depression, and didn't have very much success at first, but when Mount Rushmore was finished about 10 years later, 
the family that owned Wall Drug decided that it was time to go all in on these billboards enticing travelers on their way out to see that new tourist destination. And even now, some 80 years later, travelers can't resist the hype of stopping along the way thanks to those crazy and memorable billboards. Now, the famous pastor, Tony Evans, describes our job as being a commercial announcement for God's kingdom, a real billboard for Jesus. Now, Paul demonstrates that himself if we read forward in Philippians from where we just were. And starting at verse 12, he says, Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. I mentioned that the first reason that Rome went from executing Christians to endorsing Christianity was because the life and resurrection of Jesus was real. Now, the second reason was that Paul and the other apostles took the teaching of Jesus and they followed it. And they lived then in a way no one else was living. They demonstrated the fruits of righteousness, love and knowledge and insight and discernment. And they set out to preach the gospel and build the early church. And this good news of Jesus that they shared was so good and so transformative that not even the men guarding Paul in prison could resist it. I mean, my goodness, the, the, the government executed Paul, executed Paul and most of the other apostles. And yet they managed to ignite a movement around this amazing gospel of Jesus that grew until it transformed Rome itself. And then eventually, the world itself. But look around our world this morning. The, the words of Paul are present. I mean, we're studying them today after all. But Paul himself, of course, isn't here, right? His time on earth ended a long time ago, right? His mission as a Jesus follower has now become our mission as Jesus followers, we have inherited it from him. That means that it's our job now to live in a way that no one else is living. And thankfully, that doesn't mean that we have to go to prison or be executed, right? It's a lot simpler than that now, at least on this side of the world. But when people watch us, when they, when they watch how we live, when they watch how we love, how knowledgeable we are, how insightful we are, how discerning we are. Is it apparent to them that we're Jesus followers? I'll raise that another level for you. Is it not just apparent that we're Jesus followers, is it obvious that we're Jesus followers? Do the people that are around us, the people that interact with us each day, do they see that we're filled with the joy that we have in Jesus and the obvious love that we consistently have for others to the, to the point where they couldn't hope to resist the hype of following Jesus like a weary South Dakota traveler can't resist wall drug or that my friend Kyle couldn't resist telling my friend Craig about that twist in Sixth Sense. Now, I know that I spoiled the ending of Sixth Sense earlier, and I'm so sorry for that. But I need to spoil one more thing for you this morning, too. If you ever do actually go to Wall Drug, it doesn't really live up to the hype of the million billboards. I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend anybody, any South Dakotans in here, but it, has, it does have a restaurant, it has a little play area for kids. It does have free ice water. And then a lot of places to buy souvenirs. It's mostly just a convenient place to stop and take photos as a break from a long drive if you didn't already do that at the Mitchell Corn Palace, right? Now, the gospel of Jesus, though, is different than that. He does live up to the hype. 
living righteously as a Christian boils really down to this, and that is that we are called to live like no other people live because we follow Jesus, who lived like no other person has lived. We call Jesus our, our king, but rather than expect our service to him like most kings do, our king served us. And when he was crucified for how he lived and who he claimed to be, Jesus died in a way that other people don't die in that he didn't stay dead. How could we, how could we know that victory this morning and not live as human billboards for our Father God and our King Jesus? How could we not follow him and pursue living with that love, that knowledge, that insight, and that discerning that it takes to truly be filled with righteousness? Let's pursue that as we leave here together later. Will you pray with me? Father God, um, we're so thankful that we have the, the opportunity to, to live with righteousness, Father, uh, because we're attached to you. We are branches to your vine. And Father, we get that blessing. We get that lifeline because you are a king like any, unlike any other king in that you don't ask for our service to you. You served us. And Father, we get that blessing because you pursue a relationship with us as a result. You want us to walk with you and spend each day becoming more like you. And what a blessing that truly is. Because Father, you, you gave us in the form of Jesus a, a model of, of how to live perfectly. And then, although we can never fully get to that point, you still built a bridge so that even though we can never really fully achieve that, the fact that we fall short is forgiven anyway and we have the opportunity to, to say yes to that and to spend eternity worshiping you every day. And what an amazing act of grace that that truly is. And Father, it's in that thankfulness this morning that we respond to you in worship. It's in that thankfulness. That's why we're here this morning and that's why we pursue living righteously, being filled with your righteousness, not just when we're here together this morning, but Father, in the weeks and months and years ahead of us as well. And I pray that all humbly, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Let's go ahead and stand and close in worship together.
This morning, if you find yourself in need of prayer, um, like we mentioned before, the song, Same God, uh, if you find yourself maybe going through something uh, intense right now that you may need prayer for, um, or whether you, you know, you picture, you, you picture that you might, uh, you can see something kind of coming on the horizon that maybe you're going to try and get out ahead of in prayer. Um, you're more than welcome. We have somebody um, actually that's uh, able to pray with you and wants to pray with you. Um, if you exit out the worship center and go to the right, you'll see a room designated and reserved for that. Um, but in the meantime, um, what a blessing we have, truly, to, um, to have the ability, to have the, the, the blessing to pursue that fruit of righteousness and that relationship with our Father God. And as we go this morning, um, let's know that we are able to pursue that not on Sun, not just on Sundays, but throughout the whole week ahead. So, Amen, and have a wonderful Sunday.